I walked the city the afternoon of light night one and it was deserted. It was a quiet Wednesday, January afternoon. And even at sort of four or five o'clock, it was pretty desolate. And I'm thinking, is, is anyone gonna come? You couldn't get over any of the bridges to the hive because it was that deep with, with people. And we walked the routes that the Umbrella Project was gonna take. And they were kind of 10 deep on Angel Place. And there was just that, that moment of like, okay, we're, we're, we're on. I firmly believe, you know, people are innately curious. And when you give them permission to play, it's been a big thing for us around this sense of play. We lose play as we get older. Well, what happens when we dial back into that, that a playground isn't just for children? It's, it's what happens when that playground is, is for adults? What happens when you put a, you know, a huge 20 foot tentacles of octopus on top of a building? How do people stop and engage with that? And five-year-olds are like, this is brilliant, there's an octopus. But actually parents were stopping, so I'm going like, oh my God, have you seen this? There's a giant octopus on the building there. So you, you just dial into that sense of fun and playfulness. Our audiences are part of the work. It only comes to life with, with them as part of it. And that they, they have agency in the work and that we reward the curious. So you may just want to stand back and, and kind of watch and observe what's going on, whether that's a projection piece, whether that's an installation, um, or you can delve a bit deeper, you can get a bit closer and you can become part of the work and you may instigate parts of that work happening or you may change the direction it goes in. So we've always seen our audiences as being um, active participants in what we do and to, to change those relationships people have with, with places in the city. So a silent disco in a car park where people park their car every day, they go and do their shopping, they go to work, but for two nights that place becomes a silent disco and they know it and it's familiar but suddenly it's different and then that moment's there and then it's gone. It was, it was really important for us to create those moments and I think across the, the full festivals programme we've, we've been able to do that. The, the aim was always to um, develop a, a varied festivals programme that you know really was something for everybody so whether that be Families for Light Night down to then the festival like The Rising which was absolutely targeted at that sort of 18 to, to 30 age bracket, not uh, exclusively, but very much targeted at them because again, it was felt that there wasn't as much for them in the city. But when we worked with a group of young um, people to curate that program and in a co-production model that we'd not worked in before because they were the best people to tell us what they wanted, what they were missing. And then we would then find the, the component parts that fitted together to create that festival creating graduate employment opportunities for actors or makers was really important. But to, to blend that in a way that the audience didn't see that work any differently, that you'd have a huge international company from, from Canada bringing their work to the city alongside somebody that's, that's graduated that year. And we, we didn't make any demarcation between one supposedly being better than another. And it was all that kind of rich melting pot. With a festival like Atmosphere, um, we didn't want to tell people how to live in terms of the environment and we're all very aware of, of environmental issues now um, and, and the impact we have on, on the planet but it doesn't feel like it's our place to tell people you should or shouldn't do this what we wanted to do was post questions and so by having talks about all sorts of things we hope we have an audience going away going oh that's interesting maybe we'll have a conversation in the car with the children or with friends around um, how could we be better at recycling or how could we make our green space outside if we have one more inviting to certain animals so it's always about moving it forward, so never repeating anything. Um, and uh, as I said earlier about creating these moments in time that are there and then they're gone. And sometimes they may last um, a little bit longer. So like the, the, the poetry on pavements. But I love the fact that even now, you know, the weather is just washing that away. And in time, that will just kind of dissolve in, into kind of the, the memory bank. We're only four years old and, and Light Night Worcester now is recognised, you know, across the UK Light Festival network, but also, you know, across um, Europe. People are talking about Worcester uh, and Light Festivals 
you know, in, in, in Lyon or in kind of, you know, in, in Amsterdam. So that, that feels, you know, a, a, a big shift forward. We, we really wanted to put Worcester on the map for, for festivals. There was a definite ambition from the partners involved in this project to create a festival city. And every festival we, we've put on, we've had good audiences attend. Um, and we brought new work to the city. We've brought new experiences. We've given opportunities to, to young professionals who are already here, whether that be um, production staff, whether that be performers, whether that be marketeers, our apprenticeships, our volunteer programme, all of these things have kind of added to kind of people's sort of lives. So while we might not have changed the world and changed the whole city, I feel we, we have created those moments that, that people are still talking about and will continue to talk about. Um, and it will be fascinating to see where that goes next. But I think, you know, the, back to that original question, you know, would they come? It's like, yes and they did and and then where do we go from here what's next and that that's exciting for the city i'm excited for worcester and and what's to come next